welcome back to Crazy But Not Dangerous. I'm Shorty Vaughn. Um, today we're going to go ahead and make a pot of chili because it's raining. It's a little bit chilly and we're expecting to have bad thunderstorms tonight. So I'm going to get this cooked, get this in the oven, put this down on low. I'm going to go ahead and set it to 200 right now. And then I'm just going to let this do its thing. Well, 205. Apparently that that's where it's going to go. So, um, we're going to be making a slightly different chili than you typically see. Most often what I see people make chili, it's with a beef product. Um, beef is really expensive in our area right now. Um, the cheapest ground beef I could find this week in the ad was $2.37 for a 7525, which I can get by with the 80-20, but 75-25 is just a little too fatty for me. So we are going to be using um, El Pastor pork. And so this is already seasoned for me. Um, and the reason that we're using it is when I was cleaning out my freezer, I put my thumb right through this. So this had to come out and either get repackaged or used up. And I'm all for just going ahead and using it up. Um, this is a little bit over a pound. It was 30% off. This came out at about $3. And this is going to make a delicious chili. El Pastor is a marinated meat. Um, it has kind of a fruity essence to it, which will make this an especially delightful chili. You may not think so. This also has some peppers and onions in it. Not very much, so we're going to bulk it up. But yeah, we're going to make an El Pastor chili. It is well seasoned, but it is not especially spicy. It doesn't have the heat to it. So this is going to be delicious. And because I'm missing my mama a little bit, my mom and dad have been gone a while, quite a while. I'm going to be using her little, her pot here to make the chili. And uh, that just, oh, hello, that's normal. Sorry about that. So we're just going to go ahead and take the lid off. And we're going to get started with a little bit of my rendered bacon fat. And so when I cook bacon, I just always pour off the grease through a paper towel. And then we have... A little bit of bacon fat. I'm going to bring you down here so you can see what's going on. There we go. Fabulous. So I'm going to give it about that much bacon fat. Maybe like a tablespoon. And just let that go ahead and get melting. This is going to be a two meat this is going to be a two meat, two bean recipe. Sometimes I do three meat, three bean. Today I want to see if I can make slightly less. So for us, this will feed us probably three or four meals. If you have a larger family, this might only feed you for the day, but still pretty cost effective. So is my 30% off, like I said, this meat comes in at about $3. Now, if you did not have extra onion and pepper and what have you, this does have some, and that should be sufficient for, um, you know, if, if, you're, if you're just looking for something quick, easy, and cheap. It's already seasoned. You would not have to do much to it. I'm going to go ahead and break up this clove of garlic. And I'm just going to give that a very rough chop. I'm not really that worried about big chunks of garlic because Andrew and I both enjoy it. You can chop it as finely as you see fit. That's up to you. I also have some of these bell pepper strips. These are ones that we purchased well over a month ago. They are live in my freezer and I just take out what I think we're going to need for whatever recipe. So I take out this handful 
and I'm just going to go, they've been sitting here for a couple minutes, so they're thawing. That's fine. Just going to give them a couple of rough chops here. Not really concerned about it. Now, when you're making chili with pork product, it's going to take a little longer to cook because you want that to be really tender and it's not going to have the same mouthfeel as ground beef. Now, if you're working with ground pork, by all means, you can cook it just the same way as you would ground beef chili. Um, but since these are whole pieces, whole chunks of meat, more like a stew meat. Let's see if I can get one out here for you. You know, more like a stew meat. These are going to take a little bit longer. And that's why I'm going to brown everything, add everything to it, into the pot, and then put it in the oven to finish up. Also, because it will stay warm in the warm oven. So if we do experience a power outage, thank you. That's my oven all heated up. And my bacon fat is coating the bottom of my pan here. And it is all ready for action. So we're going to put our ground pork in here. And a little bit of onion and pepper that was included with that. And if I did not have... fresh or fresh from the freezer peppers and onions um, this would also be a great time to use any of your dehydrated products I gotta wash my hands great recipe to use your dehydrated veg in if you have dehydrated onions or peppers or anything like that, you could certainly use them. In this, there will be plenty of liquid for them to rehydrate in. And I have fresh onion today, so I am gonna use it. So my two kinds of beans, I've got black beans and then red kidney beans, but I have used every kind of bean making chili. Um, I have used uh, Great Northerns. I have used um, cannellini beans. I have used garbanzo beans, um, pinto beans, chili beans whatever I can get my hands on. I'm going to leave these onions in a fairly large slice because again, I like that really substantial feel to that meal. These are the jalapenos that we got on sale over at the fries for $2.20. Now, of course, these are completely optional. If you are not a fan of the jalapeno, um, by all means, leave that out, but we like it kind of spicy, so I'm going to put in three, and I bought these, they were already de-seeded for me, um, already cleaned up, and there's, this is quite a large amount of jalapenos. These are also pretty much already ready if I wanted to stuff them, like with cream cheese, and then put them, wrap them in bacon maybe and put them in the oven. They're already, the, the hard work's already done. So $2.20 may seem like a lot for jalapenos, um, but I think the convenience of, of the package is worth it. There we go. And I'm gonna just cut these into strips and then I'm gonna go ahead and give them a dice so that you're getting a little bite in every portion. You could cut them as small or as large as you want. Andrew would probably just put them in a hole because that's how he rolls. He likes it Bangkok hot. Bless him. Okay, so 
but that's our veg, all easy. We're also going to use one can of the diced tomatoes signature select. These have chilies in it already. So if you did not have the fresh produce, between the onions and peppers in the El Pastor mix, and this, and a couple of cans of beans, I mean, really and truly, you could have chili with nothing else added. So three, four, five, six dollars, and then some seasoning. Um, this is probably going to be about a $10 pot of chili for me because of the things that I'm adding. Um, but like I said, this will feed us at least two dinners um, tonight for two people, tomorrow for two people, and then probably a lunch serving, or I will go ahead and um, put it in the freezer for another day, whatever remains. Because it will make a lot. Chili is one of those things. I don't know how to make less. I know how to make a lot. I'm going to go ahead and throw in our veg here. And it's already starting to smell like chili. It smells good. And I'm hungry. No surprise, we're also going to be adding Costco bacon crumbles, just a couple of ounces. It really adds something. Okay, that needed a pot holder. Safety first, Tanya, you're getting sloppy. This was a pot that my mother used pretty much my entire childhood. Um, she used this and um, like this would be completely filled with green beans. Then she had another pot that was exactly like this, not yellow, but like a turquoise color. And that one was a little bit bigger and it would be completely filled with mashed potatoes. And then, you know, whatever she was cooking, whatever protein she was cooking, um, generally was either in a pressure cooker or um, in the oven. And she cooked a lot of roasts. She cooked a lot of chicken. She cooked a lot of meatloafs, a lot of spaghetti. I don't ever recall my mother making chili though. My, we ate chili, we ate chili from a can. Um, and I, she probably added something to it to make it her own. Um, I, I'm guessing like a jar of salsa which you could totally add. Like if you did not have the fresh veg, but you had a jar of salsa, you wanted to add a couple of spoonfuls of that, go right on ahead. It's your chili. I'm not judging. I'm just saying you can use pork. Now tomorrow I'm going to buy that pork shoulder roast. And when I come home, um, I'm going to put it out on the smoker and I'm going to smoke that sucker for, you know, six, eight hours, something like that. And it is going to be a substantial piece of meat. I could very well take that smoked meat out of the freezer after we've enjoyed it as much as we can and I freeze the rest. I could take that smoked meat and go ahead and put it right into this pot and make my chili with that. And that would be excellent. Andrew would love that. This is Andrew's preference, is a whole meat product in his chili um, versus ground beef. So whenever I see these on manager specials, I just go ahead and pick them up knowing that whether we have them with tacos, whether we have them with chili, um, whatever, that he will enjoy it. And it really... It really hardly needs any additional season at all, but that's not going to stop me. So like I said, we're going to add some bacon. We're going to add the tomatoes. I've got my chili bean or my chili beans. I have red beans and black beans. I've already got some drained. You can leave the, um, 
you could certainly leave the bean juice from the can in there. Nothing says it can't. It's just not my preference. I'm also going to put a little A1 in mine. And I'm going to put about half of a tablespoon in here. And I usually do with just about all of my chilies. I don't, it's just one of those things. I think it tastes delicious. And it is going to kind of temper that fruit undertone that you get with El Pastor. It's going to make it more of a savory than the, than the fruit essence. I love the fruit essence. I think it really adds a lot to your chili. And it's kind of like a pineapple, mango undertone with um, savory herbs and spices. So it's, I think it's fantastic. We've got my favorite McCormick's taco sauce seasoning mix. Sorry, taco seasoning mix. And yes, absolutely, you could use chili powder. Um, I find that pretty much the ingredients in chili powder and this taco seasoning mix are pretty much the same. And I like this, so I am going to use a tablespoon of that. I might use more. I'm also going to add some smoked paprika. And of course, you could omit any or all of these or use your own seasonings. If you had regular paprika, that would work just fine. If you had ground beef, this same recipe would work just fine. But pork is a good alternative. And you know you've seen the hack where you can put the chicken into your food processor, like a chicken breast into your food processor, and you can spin it all up and it will make ground chicken for you. If you have a boneless, um, a boneless pork loin chop, it will do the same thing. It will do the same thing in your, in your food processor. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some ancho chili some ancho chili powder. And this is not especially spicy. Um, it is very fragrant, it is very delicious, and this will add a certain depth of flavor. And I'm not adding much, like maybe half of a, tea, a tablespoon. Maybe half of a tablespoon. I'm gonna leave it out there, we can always add more. Once we get this, once we get our um meat browned all the way and we get everything added to it we can always stop and take a take a taste test is this good does this suit my palate does this need something does this need salt and so we won't do it now because we're still right we're still browning our El Pastor pork. And if I could touch the smell, the smell of those herbs and the pork and the onions and the peppers. Yes, please, and thank you. And let's just see if we can get you down there, maybe. See if we can get you down there to take a little closer look. I am going to make up some cornbread to go with this. I'm going to use one of those 50 cent mixes that we got at the discount barn and see how good those are because they had quite a lot of them. If they're really good, um, 
not tomorrow, but maybe next week I might go back just with the intention of getting the cornbread mix and the um, stuffing mix and uh, the scalloped potatoes. And I will have to use a lot of self-control, but I know I can do it. All right, that's going well. I'm going to go ahead and add, what is this? A 14.5 ounce can of diced tomatoes with green chilies. Piggy, everyone can hear you eating over there. <laughs> He's like, yeah, but I think I found something on the floor. I think when I made Andrew's lunch that I might have spilled a little bit of milk. Maybe that's what that is. Bless his little baby heart. He does love a little bit of milk. He's just like his daddy. Okay. So I've got almost a can full of water in here. I'm going to go ahead and pour... Oh, I don't know. I would say that's probably six or seven ounces of water in here. Because we're gonna cook it for a while in the oven, I want it to have a little bit of extra moisture. But again, because this is a domed lid and it fits snugly, pretty much whatever liquid I put in there is darn near the same amount of liquid that I'm going to have coming out too. Okay, so I'm going to add about three ounces of bacon to that. Oh, that looks good. Let's put our beans in. And if you were going to stretch this, add an extra can of beans. Add some dehydrated vegetables. If you're a vegetarian, omit the meat. Add extra vegetables. Add extra beans. Add extra tomato. Spoon and give it a little taste for seasoning before we put it in the oven. I have not added any salt because that McCormick's Premium Taco Seasoning Mix has salt. And then also, I'm pretty sure that the El Pastor Marinade had salt. We'll see. We'll see if we need some. Yep, it needs salt. And I'm going to say, oh, that's nice. It's not hot, but it has this really nice warming sensation. I love that. Oh, about a teaspoon and a half of salt. That's what I'm going to say. I'll give that a couple of seconds to do what it does and we'll see if it needs anything else. Are you all having the craziest weather? We are having a cold, wet winter 
and they have said that this was the coldest weather since 1993 and I remember that year it was very cold it was very wet it's not as wet as the winter of 84 that was exceptional but one one day they're telling you that we're in a water crisis and I'm getting nasty grams from the city and state about my water usage which I think is very reasonable to be honest but I'm getting nasty grams from them and then the next day they're opening the reservoirs to let water run out into the street so we don't break the dam I, I'm not gonna win I'm not gonna win I'm not gonna complain about the it's just rainy yesterday it was 80 it was 80 I did yard work I mowed the front yard I mowed the backyard, I weed whacked, I edged, I got the blower out. The blower is my favorite. I love the blower. That's so fun. And I use the blower also to clean out my garage. So it gets dusty and gross in there. I'll open both garage doors. I'll get the blower out and then I will just go through that garage and just blow all of the dust and all of the leaves that may have blown in or whatever debris right out the garage door and then I just have to get my little you know broom and dustpan out and take care of that that's a really great way to dust your garage little tip there better on salt But I'm going to add a couple of shakes of the taco seasoning mix, too. This comes out really slow. So maybe that's an extra teaspoon. It just needs a little something good on salt, though good flavor okay now I see some of that liquids reducing I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of my can of water I'm gonna put the lid on and then I'm gonna get this puppy in the oven and we are done that is it So it is 4.43. I'm going to let this go until 6.43 in the oven. Now I'm going to take it out, set it here on the stove, providing that we still have power. I'll set it on the stove no matter what. But providing that we still have power, this is what we're going to eat. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and make the cornbread too. Probably make that in the easy bake oven. And then I will serve this with a little shredded cheese and a little bit of sour cream and a little side salad and i am so lucky because i'm getting a second harvest out of my lettuce and spinach in the garden and so we're gonna have a little a little salad hey hooray gotta get your veg in stay healthy all right so i'll show you a, i'll show you the finished product when we're all done there we go but now i've got two hours to go do something else and it's rainy and gross outside so I think I'm just gonna sit quietly and read how about that so I have a little time to myself treat yourself baby treat yourself all right my lovelies well thanks for watching crazy but not dangerous I'm shorty Vaughn I appreciate you watching it was really funny because Andrew came in the other day and he said to me are you on the phone with a friend and I said well, yeah, kind of. I'm, I'm doing a YouTube video, kind of on the phone with a friend. And he laughed and he thought that was funny. But, you know, I never thought people would watch me do, you know, make chili, clip coupons, get my bargains. But thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Like and subscribe. If you have a question, if you have a comment, um... Go ahead and include it i would love to respond to all of your questions so and it doesn't have to be about making chili 
can ask me a question just about anything. I have lots of opinions. I know you find that hard to believe, but I do. All right. Be good. Be careful. Look both ways. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Okay.